You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Tuesday, April 23rd. It is uh, Easter season, and it was just a, a, a well, Easter is always a, a joyous time to it proclaim um, uh, He is risen, He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And joining us in studio today, Chaplain Craig Miller, Director of uh, LCMS Ministry to the Armed Forces. And it's always a joy to uh, to talk about our ministry, the Armed Forces, and talk with you, Chaplain Mueller. Thanks so much for being our guest this morning. Thank you, Andy. It's always great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Tell us about your time as a chaplain. You were in the you served in the Navy, correct? Yes, I did. For twenty six years on active duty, and then a couple of reserve and other duties, I guess, if you call it. But my last 10 years were with the Marine Corps. Yeah, when we had kind of mentioned that a little bit beforehand, I was started to bring back the dark memories, or the good memories, <laughs> I should say, of, of my service. I should say the long ways. Because when you start to think about, as uh, in the military, the deployments, when I started adding up, it was like, oh, that's seven Easter's that I spent away from my family, mm-hmm. you know, deployed. So that kind I of was what I meant by the... But at the same time, you are with your troops and you are, have the opportunity to bring the Easter message. You know, he has risen to your troops wherever they are deployed. And uh, I came in in 1991 on active duty. And so the very next year, I was deployed in the Arabian Gulf. 1992 was after Desert Storm. So my first non-parish experience of an Easter sunrise service was on the back of a ship on the, de- the Hilo deck in the Arabian Gulf in a hundred and some degree temperature, but, uh, or something like that with my sailors on a small destroyer. And it was, uh, it was pretty cool. You know, as the sun comes rising up over the ocean there, even in the Arabian Gulf, you know, and all that, uh, stuff that was going on, uh, you know, back, that was way back in desert storm, but that was my first Easter, I guess you could say, even away from home as a preacher's kid. And then of course, being a pastor myself in, uh, McCluskey, North Dakota had all those Traditional wow. parish mm-hmm. Easter services and experience, but that was my first one uh, kind of uh, out there in the middle of nowhere. But then you realize, hey, he's risen even in the Arabian Gulf, you know. <laughs> Celebrating <laughs> the destroyer of death on a destroyer. That's pretty cool. Hey, that's great, Andy. That's <laughs> I an think awesome we need one. to make that into an image. And <laughs> yes, I think I need to get steal it on that Facebook. one, too, for something. It, that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> but how, how does that... Um, the uh, um, that atmosphere um, kind of put Easter in a different perspective when you're when you're away from your family when you're with your your troops um, in the middle of an ocean. Uh, what what does that that atmosphere uh, make for a, a different kind of Easter? Well, I guess it, when you think about it, that's why it took me a while to just ponder that a little bit because it's really just cool because. You know, they're missing their families. Uh, they're missing their home churches because most of those that attended the, you know, the Easter sunrise service with me are Christians. And, you know, they have had that experience. And so they're now with uh, strangers, but yet shipmates, as we would call them on the ship, uh, celebrating their, you know, their faith together that mm-hmm. even though mm-hmm. I am here on this ship, my family is celebrating somewhere in the the CONUS state somewhere, the same Easter uh, message that Christ is risen. And uh, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, it's different. Um, obviously, you miss your families on those big events. But as a Christian church, I mean, it's just it's just awe striking to see the power of the, the gospel of Christ. Even there, these people really do believe and are mm-hmm. joyful about all their stuff, but being forgiven and they're there in the middle of the ocean celebrating the resurrected Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, we often, when we picture Easter, or at least when I picture, I'm not going to speak for everyone. I should stop doing that. <laughs> um, but you know, when I picture Easter, especially sunrise service, you know, the smell of the Easter lilies, which mm-hmm. for some people that's creating allergy problems. But, yeah, that's a headache for me. <laughs> yes. But I mean, that's, you know, that, and you're walking in the sanctuary, it's still kind of dark and, and kind of quiet. The specific uh, shadows that come right. through your favorite stained glass windows. Yeah. That's I what mean, I remember. A lot of those yeah. are our memories. That we, and how, I'm sure how very different that must be, um, that really brings you back to what Easter is really about. All mm-hmm. those things are peripheral, lilies and, and stained glass windows and, and, and all those things are really peripheral. Peripheral, as you were saying, it's, 
it, the, the focus really is on that gospel proclamation. Absolutely. Um, and that's what unites us mm-hmm. uh, on that uh, on that resurrection day. So now I mentioned smells. I have the smell of JP5, which is jet fuel. <laughs> that, that's what you hear smell on the deck of a, <laughs> a ship. So it's not, and then uh, you know, the hot, muggy uh, Middle East there, it was just uh, really. So yeah, that, that's a different kind of. Uh, but they did have the Easter breakfast at the Chow Hall, so oh, of the, the, course. the cooks, the mess hall cooks, did the best they could to, <laughs> to make something special for everybody. But yeah, I was just thinking about that too. You know, then I, the other ones I did, I did, I even made some notes here. Then I did one on the Pacific Ocean the very next year on a deployment, and then um, Great Lakes, Illinois. Now that doesn't seem like a deployment, uh-huh. but that is the boot camp for mm-hmm. the Navy sailors. Yeah. Great. So there's another great Easter experience for these young men and women 18 years old first time away from their Mm -hmm. family in a stressful environment obviously Mm -hmm. and then they're coming to gather for easter even though they probably come mostly every sunday anyway but to have that easter sunday they of course they can't have a lot of special privileges so there's not an easter sunrise there's no special food (laughs) it's just regular (laughs) it's another day of training but when they come to worship and you know on easter you could just see a lot of tears in the congregation as it does bring back you know the memories of growing up in a, a congregation and you know this special day for them how is let's dig into that a little bit more how is having a chaplain present in the military serving um these the these soldiers these sailors how important is it to have a chaplain there to uh, to um lead these services to conduct these services to provide pastoral care it's just so valuable because you know as we've talked about in other discussions you know the government doesn't pick uh by faith group, which chaplain serves. So when we have the opportunity to have faithful Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate pastors serving on active duty or reserve and get mobilized to bring this truth of the gospel on this special day, because there are obviously, as we know, some faith groups who don't even believe in Easter. Mm -hmm. And so if that is your chaplain, you know, that's kind of a a tough day for those who want to celebrate Easter somewhere. Where do they go to other than their own personal devotions and prayer life, obviously, uh, to still celebrate. So it's just a, a huge thing to ha- be able to have a Christian chaplain. And most importantly, I think one of our chaplains there to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, through the Lenten season, to do that journey with them. And then on Easter, it's just uh, a wonderful thing. And I think, uh, you know, all these situations that I described a few of them, but I think probably the most memorable for me, other than my first one, is probably the one in Iraq in 2006, uh, was there for a year, 13-month deployment with my Marines, and there were a lot of casualties. Mm-hmm. When you, you said that before with the destroyer, so there's probably a meme that we could come up with that oh, one, yes. too. <laughs> In the middle of the battle, uh, you know, here, my Marines and sailors, and of course we had some soldiers, too, as a joint base, uh, at this huge soccer field. We had an Easter sunrise service that I led. And again, you don't have the fancy... Uh, you just had a, a cross, um, and uh, it was a stadium that Saddam Hussein used to have, and it was actually near Abraham's oasis. They claimed that Abraham had passed through there, which is possible. I mean, that's the mm-hmm. part of the world that he was mm-hmm. at as a you know as a sojourner, and uh, so to celebrate it there uh, was kind of a unique uh, opportunity too. But you know, death for these young Marines and sailors and soldiers, whoever was there, and some airmen. Could be eminent tomorrow. They could go on patrol that night, you know. But to hear that Christ has conquered death by His death and His resurrection is uh, pretty powerful. That just really touches home. No kidding. I, I can't. I can only imagine uh, just having that different uh, that different perspective of of serving and being in in where you said. I mean, death death could it could come at any time when you're when you're in the middle of of a battlefield um, and. Having that Easter message must be uh, very comforting in the middle of of being deployed. It is. I I could just you could just tell. And then of course, when I talk to them afterwards, you know, just to hear the clear message. Because again, sometimes it gets so convoluted in today's society with what is Easter all about? What's you know when what really matters? And at that point, it really does matter and makes a difference of of knowing who you are in Christ and that if you do die tonight on patrol, you're going to heaven not because you were a good Marine or a good sailor or a good soldier, but because Christ died for you and because of your baptism, you were died and raised again as he was raised. So Hmm. it's just a a powerful, and we know that it can happen anywhere here. You know, Mm -hmm. you and I can drive down Kirkwood and 
get... Kirkwood is a scary road. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> could get T-boned by somebody or, you know, yeah. nobody knows for sure the day yeah. or the hour. But at, the, at that moment, it's just that, that kind of environment. Yeah. It's exciting. What kind of uh, comfort does that bring for the families, too, that are that are at home knowing that, that they have a loved one uh, deployed? What, what is that comfort for the families, too, to know that they have a chaplain who's, who's bringing the gospel and, and, and the word and sacrament to their loved ones? So my experience is pretty much anecdotal on that, but I do get, uh, you know, letters yeah. and thanks, you know, especially I've been in this position almost five years now, so I haven't done a lot of Easter's deployed, but mm. families will write me and thank you that I connected them to a, a Missouri Senate pastor for, you know, for Lent or the Holy Season or for Easter. Because another thing that we forget about is that we take for granted is just the opportunity to receive the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. And so that's a special time that the military does do eff extra effort to get the chaplains out to the forward operating positions. Mm -hmm. We call it the Holy Hilo mm -hmm. or a Holy Convoy to, to literally just the mission is to get the chaplain out there wow. so that they can celebrate, you know, exercise their free right to religion. And for, of course, our Missouri Synod uh, folks, that would be to have a Missouri Synod chaplain out there to provide them Lord's Supper and uh, on this glorious day. So the fa it's mostly by family telling me that they're just yeah. grateful. And then, you know, saddened sometimes because they say, my son is stationed here. Is there any Missouri Synod chaplain? I look at my list and I go, oh, there's nobody there. Breaks my heart. So I said, try to find it if there's no missionary or try to work with Office of International Mission to find somebody that can get to yeah. them if we can. Speaking of... Uh, you know, if, if someone's listening, a pastor is listening right now and thinking about chaplaincy, mm -hmm. how do they get connected uh, with an opportunity maybe to to, uh, to find out more about becoming a chaplain? Well, I think the best way is just to email me at lcmschaps at lcms.org, and we will get you connected. Chaplain Craig Mueller, Director, LCMS Ministry of the Armed Forces, thank you so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Oh,